Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today, I got an awesome lore video for you guys, and this is one that I have been working on for a very long time. Remember, I had told you guys back in April that I wanted to make a lore video on Michael and Trevor and explaining Brad's backstory, talking about a lot of things that people don't know and the real reason on why Trevor didn't kill Michael in the end. The unfortunate thing is just like the last GTA 5 lore video that I made, talking about the truth about Floyd and Deborah, this is clickbaited also really badly. Floyd and Deborah are clickbaited just as bad as Brad is. Some stupid people even claim that Brad faked his death. Other people claim that Brad is really Tracy and Jimmy's father, which is just nonsense. This video will have no clickbait, no modded cutscenes. Instead, I'm going to explain why Trevor doesn't kill Michael in the end. Now, as we know, Michael betrayed Trevor and Brad because he wanted to get out of the heist gang. This ultimately led to Brad's death. And when Trevor finds out the truth about this, it leads to a huge fight in the storyline at the very final mission and ending C, the Death Wish ending. Trevor decides not to kill Michael and makes peace with him. We know that Death Wish is the canon ending from GTA Online when Franklin mentions Michael in the contract DLC. But here's the question. Why does Trevor spare Michael? Why exactly? Most people would tell you that Trevor had a change of heart and decided at the very last minute to forgive Michael. This is actually far from the truth. While maybe part of the reason, there's a much more complex reason as to why Trevor backs off Michael and lets him live. And I have proof of the real reason, all from the lore of the game, plus some hidden dialogue that you actually might have never heard. Additionally, I have proof on the real type of person that Brad was and his backstory. Even though he only appears in one mission in the prologue, there's a bit of information about him. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Let's start out this video with this scene in which Trevor ends his vengeance against Michael. This could be it. Our showdown with a private army. And you're bringing a rifle? Yeah, I'm bringing a rifle. It's a good gun. It'll get the job done. Hey, man, what the fuck am I doing risking my ass trying to save y'all ass if you just gonna kill each other? Hey, you're not saving me. You're saving him. Ah, oh, you're saving this fat fuck. Man, y'all gotta keep y'all fucking heads right and end this shit. If not, man, I'll put bullets in both of you motherfuckers. Hey, they here? I know them when I see them, homie. They creep. All right, good. Y'all hear that? Now, if we doing this shit, man, it's either now or never. Come on, Trevor. Fuck it! Where do you want me? All right, man. You go over there. All right, where you want me? You hold your position right there. Okay. I'm gonna go over there. the building. Watch your stecker. Gee, bro, you gotta wait. But Trevor decides not to kill Michael for getting Brad killed. Let's talk about their backstory. Who are Michael and Trevor exactly? Michael is an American from the upper Midwest. We don't know whether he is from North Yankton, as he mentions his first robbery was in Carson City, another Midwestern uh, city in the GTA universe during the Polito score. Ah. Mikey, bro, what was your first bank score? 88, outskirts of Carcer City. Took a small franchise for 10G. Yeah, things were easier back then. Yeah, 25 years ago. Jesus! What we do know is that Michael grew up very poor and in a trailer park. He mentions his lack of opportunities to his therapist. Your son, James. He's a good kid. He's a good kid? A good kid. Why? Does he help the fucking poor? No. He sits on his ass all day, smoking dope and jerking off while he plays that fucking game. If that's our standard for goodness, then no wonder this country's screwed. And what about you? What about me? Hey. I don't have the advantages that kid has. By the time I was his age, I'd already been in prison twice. I robbed banks. I ran whores, I smuggled dope. And you consider them achievements? These were the opportunities I had. At least I took That's such a stupid and argument. These opportunities get you, Michael. They got me right fucking here. The end of the road. 
with a big house and a useless kid, and I'm stuck talking to you because no one else gives a shit. Oh, I'm living the dream, baby. And that dream is fucked. It is fucking fucked. The voice actors did a tremendous job in this game. But a lot of criminals act like this um, uh, in real life. They're like, I didn't have any other opportunities. This was the only choice I had. That, that is a very common attitude that a lot of criminals have. The same time next week? I guess. Man, my kids. You know, they think they understand the world. But you know, all they see is this weird fishbowl of a town. Yeah, and they probably ain't been south of the Olympic Freeway or east of Elgin Ave, right? <laughs> hey, I grew up in a trailer park, man. There, I'm gonna tell you, you see some crazy shit. I don't doubt. Michael's father also left him. We can find this out from a conversation he has hanging out with Franklin. Trying to complain less. And you? Good. I mean, yeah, good. I was gonna complain, then I realized I was turning into you. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Hey, whatever you do, don't turn into me. Man, you're not so bad. I never had a dad growing up. Older guys, they always freak me out. I got raised by a cast on the street, man. Some good, some bad. But turns out none of them knew shit about nothing. Yeah, you know what? Me neither. My dad skipped town, or got hit by a train, or joined the Navy, or something. I don't know, the story's changed so many times I lost track. For real? Yeah, that's why I wanted a normal family. And also why I turned out to be such an angry asshole. And you know, it turns out, being an angry asshole and having a normal family, they don't mix so good. No doubt, man. But your kids are okay. If you say so. So how did Michael and Trevor meet exactly? What was the exact circumstances? Well, Trevor reveals this in the mission Pac-Man. So this is the mission where Michael has been kidnapped by the triads. Trevor, Franklin, and Lamar are driving the truck full of cars to Plato Bay to give it to Molly. Franklin goes to sleep, and Lamar has a long conversation with Trevor. Most people hear the Brad part, but what people don't hear is the part when Trevor mentions how he met Michael. The only way to really hear this conversation is that you have to drive either really slow or stop, because by the time you get through halfway to Polito Bay, the police actually go after you, and so you're, most people actually do not hear this conversation. So, uh, tell me, man, how y'all end up meeting? Michael introduced us. Me and Frank didn't exactly travel in similar circles. Nah, I mean the creeper. Michael? Ha! <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know. Sorry, if I don't want to reminisce. The wounds ain't healed. You such a delicate little old bitch, ain't you? Where your pussy at? What you got in there? Screw you! That's good. Let it out, homie. Go on, let it out. Vent. The turd was probably playing me from the start. Right, yeah. Probably. How he do it? Where? When? All right. All right! Fuck! I was running this small air freight outfit in North Yankton. A tiny operation. This one beagle I could borrow when I needed it. We were kids. Kids with planes. So, this guy I know says there's this other guy needs some hot cargo moved across the border. Money's good. And I don't know enough to check references, so I'm in. A few days later, I'm waiting on the runway. I see this dust coming up off the road. Only, it ain't one dust trail, it's two. I got told one guy in cargo. First car comes through the gate, stops, someone comes out. It's my age, just 20, kinda fat but strong underneath. Love at first sight. Yeah, something like that. Other car comes through the gate. Old guy falls out, starts yelling, waving his arms and pointing at the kid. The dude that got Jack? Who fucking knows? Fat guy's running, old guy's shouting, I don't really care, I play peacemaker. Concerned citizen. I get close to the old guy and I pull out this flare gun I'm carrying around, squeeze the thing off in his eye. Shit. That was horrible. We had to pick up the body and dump it in a lake on the way. Thing was still burning in his head when we dropped him. Plane never smelt the same. Both of us threw up when we landed. It was quite a baptism. You ain't never clapped nobody before? Not really. Some deer, foxes, drifters, nothing serious. Ha! So that was like it? You and Michael rolling on through? Mas o menos. Michael didn't have the nerve back then, I didn't have the direction. Kinda worked. Until Michael got his nerve. Until he got it, and he lost it. But that's another story. So that is how Trevor met Michael. When he says he used a small beagle, this is a reference to a small series of planes called Beagle. Kind of strange we see a real aircraft company in a GTA game for once. So Trevor was a smuggler, 
and use some kind of small plane. Trevor most likely did not have a pilot's license either, as he was grounded from the Air Force in Canada and told he was unstable. I will get to that in a little bit. Despite this, he is a great pilot, which is why smugglers used him. What was Trevor smuggling? Most likely guns or drugs. For people who are unfamiliar with the environment, a state like North Yankton would be very easy to land a plane in. Why? Because North Yankton is based in North Dakota, and I have been in this state before, most notably when I filmed my video, North Yankton in Real Life. Ludendorff uh, North Yankton is actually based on Bismarck, North Dakota in real life. Check it out, I will have it linked at the end. I'm also very familiar with the land since I moved to the Midwest two years ago. But basically, a state like North Yankton is so cold in the winter that the ground freezes and would make it very easy to land small planes. You can make airstrips in so many places. There are very little trees except small patches from time to time. It's a very flat state with some hills, which would make it very easy to land. Small planes could possibly even land on frozen lakes, depending on how strong the ice is. Trevor was smuggling back and forth between there and Canada, not Mexico. How do I know he's talking about Mexico? He's flying a small plane that would most likely not make it to Mexico, refueling. And on top of that, he is very familiar with Canada as he is from there, and most likely has contacts. So what basically happened was Trevor was supposed to meet the older guy that he describes in his story. This was his contact. Trevor sees the younger guy first, who is Michael. Even though Michael robbed Trevor's contact, Trevor liked him from the start and got angry at the old guy's attitude. So he shot a flare gun at his face and killed him. This is one of Trevor's first murders. And Michael and him dumped the body. It's assumed that Michael and him split the cargo afterwards, and Michael did convince Trevor to start robbing with him. Trevor also tells this story in another version to Wade when he's traveling to Los Santos. He also tells Wade about how he was thrown out of the Air Force and how Michael met Amanda. You don't have to think about the loss no more. Let's go find my old buddy. This Michael family guy must have pissed you off real bad for you to want to find him so much. He didn't piss me off. The guys that killed him? The federal government, they pissed me off. But if he's dead, who's this? Now you're starting to grasp the pertinent questions. Who is this guy using my dead friend's tired ass movie quotes with my dead friend's alias and my dead friend's family? In a house I must have been paid for with my dead friend's stashed millions? Wow, that's a real mind fuck. Yeah, I'll show you a fucking mind fuck. I'm gonna stick my boy in your eye. It's gonna come out of your ear, huh? I, I, I didn't mean anything by that, P. Trevor? Hey, 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 how about this? I'll tell you a story if you promise never to speak again. I like stories. Of course you do. This story's about a boy called Tr Tr uh, Trisha. Trevor's Trisha talking about himself. Game? It doesn't matter. Sounds weird. He was weird. He was the smartest, toughest, weirdest kid in Canada. Well, in the Canadian border region of America. Okay. Where he's staying. Will you tell me the story about that boy, Trisha? Oh, he's gonna yeah. tell it now. Where were we? Right, 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 right. So, this kid, he could fly planes. So, he signed up for the Air Force to fly all day long and bomb villages and maybe, just maybe, drop the nuke. And it was all going well until one day, just before he got his wings, an evil witch in charge of psychological evaluations told him he was unstable and grounded him for life. That's terrible. It was. Sent him into a deep pit of doubt and despair. And just then, ju just as he hit rock bottom, he met a fat, silver-tongued troll under a bridge. That's cool. What was the troll's name? Mike Mich Michelle. A lady troll? Yeah, he had tits like one, but no, no, he, he was a boy. Michelle is a funny name for a boy. He's talking well, about Michael. This was a funny boy. He sat under his bridge, robbing anyone who passed him by. Sometimes he'd go into town and rob the shops and inns and such. And he persuaded our hero that maybe he should rob people too. And you know what? Little Trisha did rob people, and little Trisha was good at it. And they lived happily ever after? For a while. Until the troll met another troll in a strip club. And they fell in lust. And he bought her a pair of fake troll tits. Even bigger than his real troll tits. So she could make more money stripping. Maybe a little on the side without call work. But you didn't hear that from me. Wow. And then she pushed out a pair of little trolls. And the big bad troll under the... And the big bad troll under the bridge went soft. Hold on, what? So little Trevor made a new friend called Brad, and he was thinking about cutting Mike off when it all went to shit, and Mike got killed and Brad went to jail. 
Oh! Michael and Trevor were the closest together in the gang. They eventually met a few other unnamed guys, which were most likely hired help, as they aren't mentioned throughout the story. Only Brad is. The other two members of the gang were Lester, an expert computer hacker that will be responsible for planning out the heists, and Brad, a big muscle in the group. They robbed the Midwest for years, and Michael married Amanda and had kids. Michael actually also mentions to Franklin while hanging out how he regrets getting into a relationship at that point. I bet you do all right. What you mean? With the chickadees. Hey, don't settle down too early, man. I don't know. A family? Stability? It might do me some good. Yeah, as long as she's the right girl. Sometimes when you're young, you value the wrong things. Oh yeah? Yeah. I met Amanda in a seedy bar. She was smoking hot, and she liked me. I can't blame her. I was a Rocco Macho Foxo stud back in the day, and I had money in my pocket. But I should have seen. We both should have. What's that? that? That The physical attraction, the chemical stuff. That's not a stable enough foundation to build a marriage on. Hey, man, uh, I don't know all the details, but I, I know some of them, and it seems like your circumstances are pretty special, you know? Maybe there's more to your thing than you think. Yeah, maybe once. Maybe I'm not being fair. I don't know. I made this arrangement when I retired, and it means we don't got a choice about being together anymore. We're locked into that, so, yeah, yeah it's tough. It sounds real tough. I don't think Michael necessarily regrets meeting Amanda or having kids, but having kids specifically at that time. A decade had passed, and they were still robbing places. The gang had become notorious at this point, and there was a nationwide manhunt out to get them. I don't think they, they even knew the gang's faces, or else Michael, no matter a, a name change, would eventually become identified. His face would be seen by someone. That, or their faces were buried by Dave Norton. Michael realized that the gang was a ticking time bomb and eventually their luck would run out. They were in a lot of bad heists, a lot of bad situations. Michael knew something bad was eventually going to happen and the gang was going to collapse. He decided that he had to get out, and he got in contact with Dave Norton, a corrupt FIB agent. Now, this is the part of the story that a lot of people get wrong. A lot of people think that Michael ratted out the gang. Technically, he didn't, but he did betray them. What do I mean by this? To rat out his gang, he would have to turn himself in or get arrested and then start talking and eventually possibly testify against the gang. Michael instead made a deal with Dave Norton that was illegal. Dave would help Michael fake his death and kill or capture the rest of the gang. Dave would get the credit for supposedly killing the infamous Michael Townley, and in exchange, Michael could move across the country with a new name and, a and identity thanks to Dave Norton. This was a corrupt deal. Listen to Michael's background dialogue in Bury the Hatchet. Listen, Amanda. We're going to move to Los Santos, start over. I made a deal. The slate will be totally wiped clean. Hey, everybody pays attention, no one gets hurt. Trust me, darling, look at me. Amanda, it was the only thing I could do. Either everyone dies or one guy gets out. I'm that guy. Slow and steady, team. slow and steady. His name is Dave Norton, nice guy, realist. He gets the glory, I get out. It's not even a decision. Amanda, I don't have a choice. Do you want to die here where it's always snowing? Or do you want to go and live where it's always sunny? All right, you want to live? Tell me you want to live. Work this out. Work this out. Some depot out of town you don't need to know. Trust me, nothing is going to go wrong. Nothing. Yeah, I hear you. We got to follow the plan. Everything will work out. I did the deal, Amanda. It's over. Baby, we get out. Be happy. Be normal. It ain't supposed to go down like this. We did it. Baby, we are home free. It's over. This is fucked, man. The thing is blown. Just this one job and everything is done. Everything is done. Now here's a question that people may have. How did Michael know he could trust Dave Norton? How did he know that Dave Norton wouldn't simply just kill him too? Dave Norton was corrupt. He could just kill Michael and just get the credit for his career. He didn't have to honor this deal. Well, there actually is an answer on how Michael knew Dave wouldn't screw him over. And Lester reveals it early in the story. 
Your FIB buddies, they, uh, know you're back in business? FIB buddies? What are you talking about? I checked out the WPP thing. Doesn't look like any WITSEC program I'm aware of. But for starters, they, uh, they don't put witnesses up in multi-million dollar mansions in Rockford Hills. Oh, maybe they thought this would be the best cover. And most witnesses don't transfer five-figure sums into a particular FIB agent's bank account every month. Of course, the money gets moved around and washed through a number of fronts, but the trail is there. Deposits and withdrawals, the same sum every month. Agent Dave Norton, white middle-aged divorcee, unremarkable career, except for one incident. The shooting of a notorious stick-up man, Michael Town. Yeah, 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 all right. Lester, I'm very impressed. Look, uh, we can talk about this another time. Uh, take these glasses. That's how Michael knew Dave wouldn't betray him. You have to understand, people like Dave Norton are after money and want to grow their careers. Michael has plenty of money at this point. He, he has probably upwards of $50 million from all the heists he pulled in a decade running with Trevor, Lester, and Brett. I know that Michael has this money. I know he has a lot of money like this because he's depositing these five figures into Dave Norton's bank account every month. This means that Michael is giving him somewhere between $10,000 and $99,999 to Dave every month. On the, on the low end, Michael has given Dave Norton somewhere around $1,080,000 in nine years. Or on the high end, $10,799,892. I think the number is somewhere in the middle. This is so that Dave Norton keeps Michael's identity buried. He is not in witness protection. He paid off a corrupt FIB agent to fake his death and get credit for killing him. Dave Norton wouldn't have betrayed Michael because he would have never gotten a cut of Michael's savings. Michael is appe appealing to his greed. That's how he knew that Dave wouldn't screw him over, because Dave would never get a cut of everything that Michael had stolen. And Michael is giving him a cut of, of all of his earnings every month to keep his identity safe. I think that Lester was very well aware of Michael's plan, and I think that he knew exactly what Michael was going to do. How do I know this? A guy like Lester was able to track down Michael and knew he faked his death, plus was able to link him to Dave Norton. Someone like Lester would do everything to cover his tracks and make sure he's not taken down. Why didn't he just simply tell Trevor Michael was going to betray him? Because Trevor probably wouldn't believe him. Michael was his best friend after all, and Trevor and Lester didn't necessarily have the best relationship. Plus, he knows Michael never mentioned his name later on, so he might have had some loyalty to Michael before the whole thing happened. Also, there's another thing. Lester was not available in the North Yankton Depot heist. Michael mentions to Trevor in the Merriweather Freight approach that the last time we left Lester out, it went bad. Making a score. Yeah, I've done most of the planning, and uh, I think we're gonna literally make out like bandits on this. Did you talk to Lester? Yeah, yeah, I called him. It's, apparently he's in the hospital having his vagina cleaned or some shit. He's got a wasting disease. 20% saved. No, that's not how we work. Well, you'll forgive me, but that's how we're gonna work this time, all right? We're doing it my way, because as I recall the last time when we did it your way, we all got shot at, you got buried, resurrected, turned into a twat, and Brad ended up in a fucking prison! Yeah, and Lester told us not to do that job, but we did it anyway. And Lester seems pretty good, man. Would you shut the fuck up, all right? And you, Michael, owe me, all right? So this time, we do things my way. <laughs> yeah, and what about after this? After this, we think about things. I think Lester warned the crew not to do the job because he knew exactly what was going to happen, and it was his way of warning them without directly betraying Michael. Now, as for Brad, he is a very important character and the main part in this video. Brad, like I said, was one of the main crew members that ran with Michael, Trevor, and Lester for years. The reason the driver who died at the start is never mentioned is because he wasn't a member of the original crew. He was probably just hired muscle, like I said, to drive on the heist. That's why he's not mentioned again. Brad is mentioned several times by Trevor, and even in the first driving sequence with Trevor and Michael, when they meet again in fame or shame. I'm someone who knows you, you fucking slippery snake. I know the second I leave you, you'll just go home. We're gonna get your girl from these assholes. You're not abandoning her like you did me and Brad. Yeah, Brad. Poor motherfucker must have woke up handcuffed to a hospital gurney after that stunt of yours. He still writes to me from the joint, you know. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, how you been doing? Oh, I'm getting by. Aside from the loneliness and heartbreak, of course. You live in Los Santos? A few hours away. Michael later talks to Dave Norton about this and tells him it's only a matter of time until Trevor figures it all out.
Yeah, the more I see of your boss, the more I like him. I was you, I wouldn't be so critical of who others associate with. So is he gonna be a problem? For sure. But there's nothing we can do about it. If something happened to him right now, I'd be right under a microscope. An electron microscope of bureaucratic shit. And that would make it very difficult to keep old secrets. Oh, well, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo for you. You know who else is having trouble keeping secrets, asshole? Me. After you brought Trevor in on this. I only brought him in after you put out your press release. Townley's taking scores again. The Los Santos reboot. If we didn't control the situation and he'd unearth this connection, then what? Then Trevor flips out, beheads me, kills my family, or raises them as his own. I don't know which is worse. Anyway, any of that could happen at any time. Slow down. Let's think this through. What does he know? He knows I'm alive. He knows I got money. And now he knows I'm working with the FIB. Does he know how long you've been working with the FIB? How long? The fuck does that matter? Either you were working with us before the cash depot job, you walked your crew into an ambush, one of them spent ten years on the run, and the other landed in a federal penitentiary. Or... Or... We stumbled on the cash depot job, Brad went down, you went down, Trevor got away. The FIB cut you a deal on your sickbed, faked your death, and you end up here. Who's to say which of those is true? That there's any doubt probably accounts for you being alive. Back there, Trevor made you right away. The second he saw you. You remember after the bust, I was in... I was in all the papers. I was on the evening news. The man who killed Michael Townley. Yeah, I was quite a trophy. A good head to hang on your wall. Back then, sure. Not now. So how are Steve and Trevor getting along? Seems like a productive relationship. You know, like I said, he's got his uses. And as you can see, we're trying to take full advantage of him. Then what? This thing with the agency gets put to rest and we don't need you anymore. Right. And what about Trevor? What about him? I need some resolution, Davey. You let him walk. You said you'd clean the whole thing up back in North Yankton. And you told me it'd be a clean job. No casualties. There were more eyes on that town than there needed. Yeah, well, according to my eyes, Trevor's your problem, Dave, as much as he is mine. He's not a problem at all. We're monitoring him. Has he said anything about Brad? Fuck yeah, he has. Plenty. I keep changing the subject. You know, he thinks you might actually commute Brad's sentence when this is all over. That's good. Fine work. We'll send another letter. It's about time anyway. Oh, so that's you who's been sending those fucking letters to Trevor, huh? Yeah. He thinks they're from Brad. Who he thinks is locked up in high security and not, well, not six feet under in a grave marked Michael Townley. The trainees write them. It's a good exercise. Yeah, the fuck. How'd that get started? A few years ago, a letter came to the federal prison system addressed to Brad. Wasn't signed, but it gave a P.O. box in Sandy Shores. I played the part of Brad, and we started a correspondence. Yeah, thanks for telling me, Davey. I was doing you a favor. Didn't think you'd want to know he was in the same state. Yeah, so now what? I just sit back and hope he doesn't figure it out? It's worked so far. He's a time bomb, Dave, and you fucking know it. Dave mentions the emails that he sent to Trevor after Trevor had sent a letter to the prison thinking that Brad was in prison. Now, as to why Dave Norton communicated with Trevor, it was most likely so he could keep an eye on him. Arresting him does nothing for his career and may actually open old wounds. These are the emails that Dave sends Trevor. Let's take a look at them. Bradley at I Find Info. Hi T, it's Brad from prison. Trevor, I hope you are okay. It is uh, some time since I wrote you. The guards say I may be soon allowed some visitors, or uh, if I'm good. I hope you are staying out of trouble. Either that or give yourself up. Prison ain't that bad. In fact, I think you would love it. I still miss Mikey, but he's he's in a better place. I ain't got a boyfriend, thanks for asking. That stuff ain't true about prison unless you want it. Brad. And then Trevor responds with, You ain't gonna believe this, but Mike is alive. Alive and living in Los Santos. I saw it on... TV. And this is the second email that Dave Norton sends Trevor pretending to be Brad. No, it must be an imposter or something. He's dead. I saw pictures of his funeral. I know. Why don't you come here and visit me, Brad? That's a way for them to try to get Trevor, so Trevor would be walking into a trap if he accepted. But Trevor responds that uh, now ain't the time for visits. And then um, Dave will actually reply, Within this, usually an in-game or two hours, and he'll say, oh, that's too bad, brother. Brad has mentioned several more times in the story. 
He is mentioned later on in the Polito score, and Trevor says he would have loved this heist. Make sure that you guys keep that in mind. Brad would have loved the violence in the Polito heist. I'm going to explain later on why that is important. We're going to do this thing. Any questions? Comments? Yeah. I miss Brad. That crazy motherfucker was with us now. He would have loved this. Instead, he's got to enjoy himself molesting white-collar criminals in a federal penitentiary. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Trevor also later mentions him in the mission Derailed. And in that mission, he explains also what his problem is with Michael, how Trevor actually lost all of his money after Michael's disappearance. Come on! We need to get on land. Pull her up down the coast. Whoa! Man, you work hard for your living. Boil it down for me. How much you think you make for a census killing, huh? Couple nickels? Times are tough. Have been since we put you in the ground. Hey, you had your savings. That I couldn't access because you blew the identities. You know, there was nothing for Brad's defense. Man didn't even get a trial, just popped up in Supermax. And he mentions him in Bury the Hatchet. At this point, Trevor finally figures out what Michael was hiding. Hey, man. Fuck. What do you want? I'm your friend. I don't want anything, man. Come on, your company's good enough, huh? Same as always. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate that. So, family ain't back yet, huh? <laughs> nope. Oh, she's a goddamn fool, man. Despite all the chaos of these last few weeks, I think I finally figured it out. I know, no. sounds ridiculous. No, actually, it does not sound ridiculous, you know? Because you, you're a killer. You know, you are a man of action. You do not sit on couches, you take scores. You're back, man. We are back, all right? All we gotta go do is bust out Brad and then we're golden, man. Franklin, he makes us multicultural. Lester makes it cyber. We're like modern America. We just get ourselves a gay friend. Bam! No, it's not it. I got money. It just makes you miserable. I want to make movies. Great. It's great. And uh, so where exactly does this leave me in the second act of your life? We're going to do this last big job. And then we're going to dissolve the partnership. This is not a game to me. All right, this is a fucking way of life. I got a fucking family! Yeah, well, I got nothing! No one gives a fuck about me! I do. Oh, fuck you! I saw your grave. I mourned you. And then it turns out that everything I fucking thought about you was wrong. Everything. You're not dead, and you're not a man. Well, what the fuck are you? I'm your fucking nightmare! Yeah, enough with your goddamn threats! Let me... Let me just ask you something, all right? Something I've been, I've been thinking about. Up in North Yankton, exactly who was buried in your place? I never gave it any thought. You know what I'm thinking? I had no clue. You treacherous piece of shit! You're fucking dead! You're fucking dead! Oh, fuck. Trevor! Hey! T! So in Bury the Hatchet, there are two approaches to this mission. Michael's perspective and Trevor's perspective. Let's look at Michael's perspective first. Ah, great! Fuck you! Hey, come on, where you going? You know where I'm going, fuck you! You don't need to go all the way to North Yankton to find out what I can tell you over a couple beers back in my house. Come on, we'll order pizza. Fuck! This is- <gasps> Stop your car, come- <sighs> I'm- 
Hey, I'll- I'm going up! You- <laughs> It'll be- Just- <gasps> I'm You've done- Fuck! Shit! Oh, please! Special Agent Norton. Shit! Davey! Shit, he knows! I think he knows! What? Who? Think! Shit! Shit, how? I don't know how. He used his head. But does he know? Does he know at all? Hey, he's on his way up to Ludendorff to confirm his suspicions. Shit! Then what? Then who fucking knows what? I don't know. I'm gonna go see if I can reason with him. I come, but I... 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 Yeah, don't worry about it. This is between me and him. Besides, if it goes wrong up there, I'm sure you ain't far down his list. That's good to know. Now let's look at Trevor's perspective. I will. Trevor? It's great to, uh... There a plane I can use. Get me across country. Sure. Sure. We got one fueled up for a trip south of the border. I'm taking it. Is everything okay, man? Everything is not okay. Nothing has ever been okay, but I gotta see it for myself. I'm gonna see an old friend, all right? You're where I think you are, buddy. I don't know why I didn't see it. I guess, I guess I didn't want to. Fuck! Maybe I knew all along. I'm gonna find out for sure, and I'm gonna do something about it. There's always something wrong with that job. What went down after, I guess. I guess I wanted to believe fucking, fucking play circus! Idiot, idiot! Idiot! I'm sorry, Trevor. It eventually leads to this infamous scene. Who you got in here, huh? As if I need to ask. Hey, you're wasting your time. Is that why you flew out here? Huh? Tell me I'm wasting my time? Go ahead, dig it up. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's what you look like. The guy who doesn't give a shit. That's ridiculous. How long are you gonna keep lying for, Mikey, huh? When's it gonna stop? What happens in the dark comes out in the light. I'll give it a rest, Trevor. There's nothing there! This is it. Moment of truth. I didn't know. Brad! Look, we do what we gotta do to survive. This thing, it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. Oh, and how was that, huh? With Brad in the can and me in the ground, or, 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 or both of us in the coffin? Brad got shot. You saw it. He didn't make it. I got shot, I did. That's, that's it. I think the only thing... That didn't go as planned was me showing up on your doorstep ten years later. 
Mikey, I mourned you. And I missed you. But I got a fucking family, Trevor. We were all gonna die. He did die. You reptilian motherfucker! I didn't want it to come to this. Yes, you did! You just don't have the fucking balls to do it! But I do! I got more to lose than you. Never a truer word has been spoken, brother. Now pull the fucking trigger! You ain't got the guts. Take the fucking shot! Who is that? Fuck! 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 Joe Phillips! Mr. Cho has requested a word! Hey, ho, ho! I'm not the guy you're looking for! Hey, Tazi Zimit! Tazi Zimit! Get the boyfriend! Boyfriend? Motherfucker. Now, I made a poll about this very topic about nine months ago, asking people who thought was right in this conflict. Who did you guys think was right? 26% sided with Trevor, 8% with Michael, and 66% said they were both wrong. Here's what I will say about this. Even if you defend Michael, he's still a traitor. Even if you think what he did was right, he still betrayed the group. He is still a traitor, that's a fact. You could try to make the argument he had to do what he had to do to protect his family, but he's still a traitor no matter what. So Michael ends up getting captured by the Triads, and when Trevor lands, Wei Cheng calls him and threatens Michael. Trevor Phillips Industries. Mr. Phillips, this is Wei Cheng. You know my eldest son Tao. Yeah, the ex-nut. Backed out of a contract we agreed on. How is he? Still learning the ropes, thank you. My friends miss you in North Yankton. I was hoping we could talk. <laughs> Was that your people? Ah, oh, of course. Sorry I had to cut out. Your operation causes problem for me. I want to expand into Blaine County, but your business and your temperament prevent me from making inroads. Oh, well, too bad. I don't know what you can do about that. I've already done something. We have your lover. Whoa, 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 whoa. My lover? My Cody Santa. You live in your trailer together, with the maid, and then you were alone in that big house. Well, you're clearly very close. You know, how much will you give up for his safety? <laughs> My lover! Yeah, right! It's a tough break. I never want to double-cross a friend and put him in danger, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My business ain't going anywhere. I'm serious about this. He will die! Tell him, I love him dearly. There's a few secret phone calls right after this where Trevor can call Jimmy, Wei, and Ron. Uncle T! Hey kid, tell me again about how much you hate your father. Hate him? I, I don't hate him. We didn't... Well, we don't get along all the time, but I kind of sort of realizing I love him, despite him being such an asshole. Mm, that's bullshit, kid! Have I taught you nothing? He is a heartless, selfish prick, and we both know it! T, you're scaring me. Look, please don't do anything, okay? Don't kill him, please! Please, 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 please! Oh, you know, you are his kid after all. Boss, hey! Let me ask you something, great unearther of conspiracies. Sure, shoot. Why didn't you see the big lie right under my nose? Michael fucking Townley. Is he Illuminati or Anunnaki? No! Oh, he's a lizard! Oh boy, I knew it! He's not a lizard. He's a liar and a cheat. I, I thought we knew that. Brad's dead! Letters! Written by the feds! Shit, the feds? What are you gonna do? Uh, I don't know. Got you for failing to figure this out? I'm thinking about it.
Patricia! Mrs. Madrazo! Trevor! Oh, I miss you. All you boys. Miss you too. I, I can't speak for the other... boys. You're such good friends. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. Actually, Michael and I... Uh, not speaking. Old friendships cannot be replaced. Hey, how are you? Is Martin looking after you? He's here. I've got to go. Mr. Phillips, have you reconsidered? Mr. Cheng, lay it out for me again there, Bro Rice. What were the options? Forgo your interest in Blaine County, or never see your Mr. Dissenter again. Ooh, mm, my business or my boyfriend. Mm, yeah, that's tough. I guess I looked at that pretty face for the last time. We have delayed acting to give you a chance. Soon, it will be too late. Hey man, where that other dude? The dude that creeped on that dude. Michael, this creeping days are done. Well, what you mean? He stopped creeping? No more creeping for him. He like, retired? From, from creeping? From everything. That's funny, kid. Like, boy Frank didn't mention shit about that. And as a matter of fact, I don't even know the dude. But considering the mutual acquaintances we got, I would have liked an invite to the retirement party. There were no party. No party? I use the term retirement. Euphemistically. Homie, for a dude that kills dudes and eats dudes and fuck dudes, you talk fruity. It's unconfirmed. What's unconfirmed? The fact that you talk stupid or the fact that you do some messed up shit? Or where the other dudes at? Like, maybe he's dead. The last one. Oh shit, man. Fuck. Do Frank know about this? I don't know if Franklin knows, but let's just let him sleep. <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's a bummer. But you know, he wasn't the good guy he made out. Man, dude was a killer, a thief, a liar, and irritable as shit. Yeah, a liar. Above all else, a fucking liar. Homie, you sound like some bitch he ain't called. Like, oh, he lied to me. I am some bitch he didn't call for ten years. Fuck, man, he fucked you. The fucker got fucked. Damn, he fucked the fucker himself. Shut up. Up. Man, the first time's always special. I hope he was gentle with you. Enough of that! And enough about me fucking. I don't do that. As a rule. Maybe when I got to LS, I was I was a little overwhelmed by the place. I got a little out of control. But that ain't who I am, for the most part. But the Michael fucked you. Yeah. The Michael fucked me. And the Michael fucked Brad. And the Michael ran off with the FIB. Brad? Who... Who the fuck is Brad? Brad is our boy back from the day. And Michael killed him? Michael got him killed. He died when Michael faked his death. I thought Michael died and Brad was in the pen, when actually Brad was in the ground and Michael was in hiding. And now Michael's dead and it's all okay? Michael's current condition is unconfirmed. I said that. But if he was dead, you'd be cool because of this Brad dude who died whenever. <sighs> yes. Man, I thought you and Michael were tight. So did I. Okay, that make a lot of fucking sense. Later on, Franklin will save Michael from the triads, and Michael admits to Franklin what he did, and you can see that Franklin is disgusted with Michael. All right, then, I'll see you. Show. Hey, you sure you don't want to come in? What, your big empty-ass house? Dog, I'm depressed enough already. All right, well, listen, thanks. Look, man, before you go, what the fuck happened up there? I said, Trevor went crazy, tried to kill me, I got jumped by the Chinese. Man, before all that, I'm talking about the feds. Trevor, this guy Brad, man. I know what you meant. All right, look, I made a judgment call. I don't know if it was the right one. I did what I thought I had to do. I had a young family, Franklin. I was running with a crew of crazy motherfuckers with nothing to lose. I saw an out. A future for me, for my family. I took it. You took it? Man, you burned every motherfucker you've ever known. It was that or die. <clears throat> Look, I know it sounds cold. I don't expect you to understand it. Not yet, but you will. When you got ties of your own. Look, you wake up one day, and, and your legs, they just give. You just can't run anymore. 
All right, man, look. You watch your back, all right? When Trevor finds out you're still alive, I don't know what the fuck he gonna do. Don't worry about Trevor. He's not gonna get near me. Hey, you watch your back. You hear me? Dog, it ain't me he coming for. We straight. It's you, dog. It's you. I'm just saying. Stay away from me. You're a snake, tell me. You know, it was a long time ago. You should really move on. Oh, it's easy to move on when you move into a mansion. You don't want a mansion, T. Come on. You want an excuse to do whatever the fuck you want. I see you again, I'll do whatever I want to your face. Yeah, sure, bro. Take it easy. Now, at this point in the game, before the ending, there is actually secret dialogue, which is why this video was delayed. I want to apologize to everyone for the delay originally, but I had to replay the game to get to this point. If Franklin hangs out with either Michael or Trevor before the final mission, when they still have a problem with each other, they will, com they will comment on the conflict between them. Here's what Michael says to Franklin during that. Good to see you, man. All right, out with it. What? Out with it. You got something to say. Say it. You mean about you and Trevor? No, I don't got nothing to say. It's between you two. Hey, I hear it in your voice. He spoke to you. You think I was out of line. I wasn't. I don't think nothing. I ain't getting involved, man. You ain't no angel, all right? You're a bad cat. On a normal scale, you're one of the worst. <sighs> all right. So am I, okay? I'll put my hand up. But Trevor, Trevor's a whole different level. Trevor's worse. Worse than you, worse than me. So when it came to choosing, there really was no choice. If there was no choice, then don't choose, man. You could have abstained. I knew you had something to say. Get over it. It happened. I ain't thinking about it. But you clearly are, bro. It's clearly on your mind. You should speak to Trevor. Hey, fuck Trevor, all right? What are you giving me shit for? I'm just saying, make good with him, dawg. I'm not the bad guy here. Uh, at least I'm not the worst guy. All right, whatever. So you spoken to Trevor? No, of course I haven't spoken to Trevor. And you stop judging me and get real. Yeah, I screwed him over, sure. But trust me, he deserved it. Man, I'm not sure he sees it like that. I'm sure you're right. But think, have I ever screwed you over? No, I've been straight with you. But people who are straight with Trevor tend to end up stuffed down his toilet. So Michael is basically telling Franklin the whole time Trevor is worse than me and that he has to get over it. Michael is very unremorseful. He blames Trevor and says he did what he had to do. Honestly, his attitude pisses me off. But let's see what Trevor's attitude is. So, uh, I've been meaning to ask you. How are you, dawg? You okay? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Yeah, whoa! <laughs> Real good. I I've been thinking. Hey, that's good to hear, man. I've been, uh, kinda worried. Ow, oh, don't worry about me, man. Before, maybe. When I was walking around like an idiot being made a fool of. But now, now that everything has come out into the light, you don't need to worry about me. Good, homie. Worry about Michael. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, man, what you, um, gonna do? I do not know yet. I could kill him, could kill him slow, or I could just leave him, let him live in fear in the hell he's created for himself. You know, I think the second one, the living hell, that's the way to go. I still ain't decided. Whose side you on, bro? Mine? You on mine? I ain't on anyone's side. I ain't picking teams. That's a pussy answer. Be a man. Take my side. The manly thing to say is, it was a long time ago, and I shouldn't be asked to choose. Pussy. 
Listen, I know this whole thing with Michael puts you in a difficult situation. I guess it's something I don't really understand. What's to understand? The guy's a rat. Rats are to be avoided. Man, maybe I should stay out of it. Nonsense. You gotta take sides. Take my side, I mean. So, uh, what's been up with you? I've been great, kid. I've been replaying my entire life over and over and realizing just how many lies I was told. I'm too trusting. Well, maybe. I mean, that's one way of seeing things. Well, why don't you tell me another cupcake? Maybe. Michael was in a tough... in a tough spot. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was. But not nearly so tough as the one he'll be in when I take my well-deserved vengeance on him. What about you guys have a talk first? Michael doesn't talk. Michael sucks balls. And soon, he'll be sucking dead balls. Is that a phrase? <laughs> it is now. Trevor's attitude is honestly not much better. He blames Michael and tries to get Franklin on his side. To be fair, Michael also tried to turn Franklin to his side, but doesn't say it directly. Michael instead just says he's the better person, where Trevor calls Michael a snake and tells Franklin to take his side. Franklin does the right thing, not picking sides. He's trying to play peacemaker and solve the issue between both of them, and trying to stop both of them from getting pissed off at him. Now, at this point in the story, Michael goes to raid the Bureau, but, but before he raids it, if you do the roof approach, he gives a very ungrateful attitude, and this is where Michael is completely wrong. Franklin is right to call him out. Stevie cleared the noose building in Palomino Highlands as a base for this op. All right, now let's roll on this thing. Why are you so chipper? Shit, why are you so miserable? Must be an H thing. Great. Now there's something to look forward to. What's the plan again, man? And please, let it involve someone shooting you for being so goddamn miserable. Oh, what is this? Pick on me day? Look, I know I'm a miserable old prick, but give me a break. You and Lester. Shit. So the plan was feeling sorry for your ass, right? I miss Lester saying that shit, but sure. Let's feel sorry for Michael. Rich, white Michael, poor Michael, who robbed banks for 10 years, then got his slate wiped clean. Yeah, yeah. Poor Michaels, whose homies get in the shit with the FIB out of the kindness of their own heart, put their necks on the line. Man, where's my get out of jail free car, motherfucker? I'm sorry, okay? You know what, Mike? You're a real easy dude to identify with, man. Poor me. Poor me. Man, pour me a drink, nigga. Okay, okay, I can see. Maybe I've been a little caught up in myself lately. A little? Man, just give me the plan, okay? All right. Here's the shot. We're taking a chopper up to altitude. Franklin was right to call Michael out when him and Lester are still helping him with his FIB problems, and Michael seemingly apologizes. I'm gonna take us up to the jump spot. Feels weird not having Trevor on the stick. Feels okay to me. He might be a better pilot, but I'm less inclined to kill you in your sleep. Shit, that ain't what he says. Okay, I'm less inclined to stab you in the face and then do funny things to your corpse. That sounds about right. Hey, everyone, quick pep talk. My friend Franklin here called me out for being an ungrateful prick on the way over here. I have to admit, I've been remiss. Everyone's being paid on this run, except me. But it ain't great money for the crazy target you're drawing on your back, and there's a good chance this thing won't work at all. Our job's a job, man. Let's do it. So, in short, thank you for your efforts. It means a lot to me. I picked you guys out especially for this shit show. So take something from that, if you will. There'll be more scores down the road, maybe a big one, and sunnier days ahead. But this is where we are right now. Let's try to survive it and achieve our objectives. We stick together, we might not die. That's what's getting me through this. All right. However, he starts complaining at the end when he isn't getting paid. And if you get Taliana, she calls him out because she's a great driver and takes a very low rate. Act like a paramedic crew. One of you unloads his weapon, I'll cut his other weapon off. I'm getting cold sweats here, shit. All right, all right, we're clear. Frank, I told Les we could use your place for a post-mortem. Hey, Taliana, right? Great move, bringing an ambulance. It's a common trick. The crew don't get jumpy, it usually works. Common or not, it takes balls, and you got them. Whoa, now we're clear, I could probably say I never expected to make it out of there. 
Yeah, sure, man. We had it covered. Oh, really? It was covered, was it? Uh, yeah. Lester had the plan. It was all set up. Yeah, we had a plan. Hold off the nastiest team of crooked FIB agents in the country while the last of the baby boomers pretends he's a hacker? Come on. It was hopeful. And then when the chopper crashed? Oh, man. I thought there was no fucking way. Why do you think Lester burned down the business? Hell, why do you think I'm doing it for nothing? And these clowns are getting paid? You're screwing with me, right? I've already given you a major discount on my standard rate. Shit, yeah, of course. Don't think I'm ungrateful. If you want to renegotiate, let's go back and I'll drop you outside the FIB building. I get it. I'm sorry. Hey, man, tell him you messing with him, Mike. Hey, I was semi-sorta of serious, but joking once you reacted like that, all right? Chill out. Look, man, he was just messing with y'all. This is great sense of humor. The FIB people who put us up to this, they probably gonna pop him anyway to clean up loose ends. And if they don't, he got a homeboy named Trevor that probably will. That's a good point. I ain't gonna have the time to spend it, so enjoy. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. We can joke about how screwed up your damn life is. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, well, what else are we gonna do? Besides, Trevor ain't a problem, and Dave will look after me, I think. Boys, I'm gonna be honest, I got a semi-serious cocaine and partying habit, too. It's expensive, and there ain't much else for me in sunny Los Santos, so, you know, I need that money. You're getting paid, Packy. Don't worry. Well, people, we did it. A raid on the Bureau. It wasn't the biggest job, or the smartest, but it was probably the ballsiest. Yeah, here's to that. Yeah, boy, I'm still shaking. I'm still so fucking tense. Man, that could be the job. Or it could be you thinking about all the dudes who want to clap your ass. Yeah, probably a bit of both. <laughs> now, no one's gonna clap me. I just need to get my shit together. Nah, man, what you need is a damn drink. Oh, yeah. Scenes like this show how ungrateful Michael is. He constantly whines about his life and is ungrateful to the people who help him out. He does somewhat change near the end, but this is another reason why Trevor can't stand him. So after the bureau raid, Michael meets Dave and Steve who start blaming him for the problems they are experiencing. Then Agent Sanchez betrays them and it turns into a giant shootout. Trevor comes to save Michael, but this is not because he has changed his mind. Instead, it's because he needs Michael for the big one. Touching reunion and all, but I'm about to get jumped by a team of rogue agents. Steve, you got the vantage point. Well, that was fun. What are you doing smoking, huh? Come on, man. No, no, no. That's bad for you, don't you know, huh? Yeah, well, maybe it's got a little something to do with being caught in the middle of a three-way firefight between two government agencies and a private militia. You know, it gets me a little stressed out. Okay, but we still need you alive, Mikey boy. I mean, you know, at least for now. Unless, of course, you have another surprise for me. Huh? Maybe something to do with another inappropriate friendship? Yeah, that wasn't exactly Dave's fault. No, no, no. He's just the friendly face of a corrupt government agency looking to further his career by dealing with an equally corrupt and full to the fucking brim with bullshit low rent hood. Listen, Trevor. Listen, I've been meaning. Oh, uh, you know, I've been meaning. I've been meaning to tell you. You know, I've been. What, homie? What are you been meaning to tell me, huh? That you stabbed me in the back. Or that you were, and always will be, a worthless wretch who deserves to be put under. Yeah, well, no, what the fuck, fuck did you day? come back for? Oh, you know why. Ah, oh, no, no, no. One last score. Mm-hmm. And if it goes good, <laughs> guess what? I don't have to put a little bullet in your head, but if it goes bad, well, that's okay, too. Because then you and I get to go to hell, and I get to spend the rest of eternity with you Tormenting you. Well, I guess it's on then. Yeah, I guess it is. Call Lester. Let's go. On speakerphone. Hey, it's me. I know. How'd it go? Just fabulous. Ran into an old friend. Matter of fact, he saved my ass. Oh, we're all friends now. Suppose the group hugs out of the question? <laughs> he wants to, uh, still go on the final victory tour. All right, when it looks like it's a go, I'll contact you. And remember this, gentlemen. If we pull this off, we will be making history. Sordid, nasty, depraved history. But history, nonetheless. All right. 
There, you happy? Fucking thrilled. Don't forget, amigo. Keep my eye on you. Yeah. Remember what Michael promised him earlier in the story? Oh, his and hers, huh? Because of your independent spirit. Hey, 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 hey! Hey, before you go, show me the loot. All right. It's perfect. Perfect for fucking what? For squaring things with that Mexican psycho. We give him this, and you end your relationship with that little lady. Maybe we won't be dead men in Los Santos. I don't fucking see that Silicon City again. It'll be too soon. But this is my job, not your call to make. Nah, nah, your job. Fuck things up with the Mexican to begin with. My job, my score, get your own! Wait, you give me that case, I'll give you something bigger. What? Union Depository. Fuck off. Can't be done. I never said impossible. Just very difficult. Verging suicidal? That a line you're afraid to cross? Come on, T. You remember the dreams? Couple kids pulling jobs, the big one. I know it sounded crazy back then, huh? But hey. You and me, together again. With Lester and Franklin on board. We can do this thing, T. This ain't no dream no more. Hey. You keep the case. Fuck me. Okay, hey! All right. Here. Keep that silly fucking thing. And you can keep Patricia as well, all right? Because I respect that lady and I ain't gonna hold her back. <sighs> Thank you. Just remember, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on you every inch of the way, all right? Of course. And if that bastard fucking cheats on her one more time, mm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, Trevor, we both know you're not the marrying kind. But hey, it's great to be back in business, huh? Let's bring it on. The big one! The big one! Trevor tells Michael he won't have to kill him if he helps him with the big one. They do the heist together, and in the subtle approach, Trevor actually threatens Michael. No, this last one. He's retiring. <laughs> Exploring other opportunities. Hey, the chance of an early death increases dramatically when you retire. Yeah, I'll bear that in mind. Hmm. Trevor just threatened him. He heard what he said. He said your chances of an early death increase dramatically but when you retire. He also later on causes a scene outside Michael's house. Kind of weird how everyone's going back to Michael's house. Woohoo! Gentlemen! Ah, uh, Lester. We have just made history. Ah, uh, I don't want to ask a dumb question here, but where's the metal? I've got it on lockdown for a few days while I'm waiting for the go-ahead to melt it and move it. Where? Where? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where is just the point? Let's say somebody gets pinched, well then where is the evidence? Or if anyone gets any silly ideas, then they'll just be futile. So we can take it easy, knowing that uh, it's gonna be a few days before Judas here shows his true colors. Really? Now? Yeah, now, sugar. So, um, uh, for people wondering what Trevor means when he says that, why Michael took that really personal, is, um, uh, Judas, in, in, in the religion Christianity, Judas is actually the one who betrayed uh, Jesus Christ for money um, and sold him out. And so when somebody calls somebody a Judas, that is basically implying that they are the worst possible kind of traitor, the traitor that would sell out their best friends and family for money. And so that's what Trevor is basically saying, that you, you betrayed me and Brad for money, your brothers. Um, that's basically why Michael took a lot of offense to this, so people understand that. Why don't you take a moment while you're sitting on that big fat pile of cash to chill the fuck out and realize what's done is done. Whatever you say. Right? Well, this is a good time. That's this fucking fuck, 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 fuck you, you man. Hey, 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 hey. God. For a couple of Midwest stick-up artists, you guys sure have become a pair of 
whiny West Coast douchebags. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with the West Coast? Oh, nothing. I love it here. Everyone's so numbed by the sun that if you use a three-syllable word, they think you're a professor. Man, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, you high and mighty weasel. And you don't talk down them to these fucking idiots. Hey, leave Lester alone. Oh, oh, you and Lester together? Oh, now that makes fucking sense. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. You all the assholes. Man, I gotta go calm down, homie. This shit was real illuminating. Franklin, sorry. Come on back, have a beer or something. If you do the obvious approach, he causes a scene at Mackenzie Airfield. He is alive. And you dropped the gold on the train? Yeah, we dropped our gold. All right. So we did it. Hell yeah, we did it. We took down a union depository. The UD, man. Damn. Woo. Feels good, don't it? All right, set it down. So that's the conversation, um... Hey, look, man, I'm gonna get the car up out of here, all right? All right. Hey, you two, come with me. I'm gonna need some help getting the metal in storage for a few days before I can sell it. Both of us? Yes, both of you. All right, it's been a pleasure working with you. You'll get paid when we get the cash. But until then, I want you to keep it on the down low. No new cars, no vacation. No nothing! Now, come on, sugar! <laughs> oh, fuck me. Now, at the very end of the game, Franklin tries to save both Trevor and Michael. This is the canon ending. We know this is the canon ending because in GTA Online, it confirms that Michael is alive years later when Franklin says it in the contract DLC. And we know that Trevor is alive because Ron says that Trevor has left. Which leads us to this final cutscene where Trevor once and for all ends his vendetta against Michael. Y'all hear that? Now, who doing this shit, man? It's either now or never. Come on, Trevor. Fuck it! Where do you want me? All right, man. You go over there. All right, where you want me? You hold your position right there. Okay. I'm gonna go over there. building. Watch your stecker. Gee, oh, you gotta wait. But now here's the question. Why does Trevor agree not to kill Michael in the end? Does he just forgive him and feel bad for him? That's what most players think. No, it may be part of it, but there is actually much more to it. The reason that Trevor doesn't kill him, it's very complex. If you choose to hang out, Trevor and Franklin al alone, just, just Trevor and Franklin hanging out, nobody else, you get a unique dialogue where Franklin asks him why he didn't kill Michael in the end, and Trevor actually explains it. So I gotta ask you something, T. Address to the right. What? Nothing. No, I, I gotta ask you, why didn't you, why, why didn't you, you know, kill Mikey? I'd rather talk about my penis. No doubt. I don't know. I thought a lot about it. I wanted to. Oh, <laughs> I really did. But she got kids and I don't quite know. I suppose it was a long time ago and I suppose we had some fun here and I suppose I made my mind up. That he's a dick! But the people against us were worse, so I killed the bigger dicks. And Michael lucked out. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, he's still a dick! But I kinda love him for it. I love how much he hates himself. It makes me feel all is right with the world. Hey, dog, it's good to know you pissed up aside with Mike. You know, I was kinda worried a little. Like I said, I thought of his children, and in a way, you're one of his children. The one he shares with me. Uh, thanks, man, I guess. Really? If I'm completely honest with you, Brad was a bit of a dick. The dude who got killed? Yeah, yeah I mean, would I have done it one day? Maybe. Probably. Probably likely. 
wouldn't have done it in such an underhanded fashion, and the authorities wouldn't have been involved, but yeah, bit of a dick. So all this was over a guy neither of you really liked? Well, the, the, the principle was the thing, and if I'm anything, I'm a man of principles. Hey, I'm happy you got over your principles, and thank the universe Brad was a dick. Hola, señor. So you heard that from Trevor right there, guys. He thought about Michael's kids, and he was more angry at the people after them at the moment. This includes Steve Haynes, the Triads, and Devin Weston. He also mentions that Brad was a scumbag, and he would eventually probably kill him himself. But let's talk first about Michael's kids. This is one of the most important reasons why Trevor actually spares Michael. If Michael didn't have kids, maybe it would have ended very differently. But why are Michael's kids so important? The reason is because Trevor cares deeply about them. Remember, we talked about how Michael met Amanda and had Jimmy and Tracy. Trevor saw both of them grow up and was very close to them, which is why Jimmy calls Trevor Uncle T. Tracy also remembers him. This is why she hugs him the moment she sees him so many years later. Tracy was born in 1991 and Jimmy in 1993. So Trevor watched them both grow up and knew them for at least a decade each. The point is he cares deeply about them and would never hurt them. Listen to some of the conversations that Trevor has with Jimmy. Whatever. Have you been, Uncle T? Having a gay old time, my boy. A gay old time. W what have you been doing? Mm, well, I'd tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Really? No. I'd just terrify you until you soiled yourself, then kill someone else you loved. That would probably keep you quiet. Okay. On a, on a different subject, do you think my mom and dad will stay together? I mean, you knew them years ago. Hmm, well, that's an interesting dilemma. Your mom, she's a great girl. She had a great pair of legs when she was younger, always loved money, a lot, if you know what I mean, and your dad, well, I love him like a brother, but he's a back-stabbing, lying degenerate with less backbone than a garden worm. Okay. So, in a way, I'd say they were made for each other. Two lying, backstabbing, money-hungry desperados. <sighs> Gotta love them. Anyway, how's school? I'm not in school. Oh, good for you, kid. Good for you. I'm so glad we're hanging out, T. Good. Because me and my dad, we're not speaking right now. Yeah, I know. He's an asshole, Uncle T. I know. I agree, Jimbo. He's one prize asshole. His whole life is just one long manifestation of assholeness. He's ruined you, hurt me, and fucked his life up. Sometimes, I wish you were my dad. I can see why. The thing is, us guys, we need role models, and your dad ain't much of one. Uncle T, on the other hand, I'm just a better guy. Yep. And when fate finally catches up, man, he will be fucked. Oh, uh... Oh, ah, uh, yeah. It's good to see you, Uncle T. And you, kid, and you. Been a long time. Yeah, really long. Well... Let's make up for lost time. Jeez, uh, your dad. <laughs> eh, what an asshole, huh? My dad? Yeah. <laughs> really selfish asshole, don't you think? No, oh, wait a moment, that's not fair. He's your dad. He's a hypocrite and a selfish asshole, but we love him. Okay. But listen to me. You don't stab people in the back like he did. You hear me? What do you mean? I mean, you stab him in the face. In the face. Plunge, twist across the throat, and then they're gone and you're the last thing they see on this earth. That's how you stab someone. Okay. Stick there. with T, pork chop. I'll see you right. I'm worried about Tracy, Uncle T. Yeah? Why is that? I think she's losing herself. Well, just keep an eye on her, kid. If there's a man taking advantage, you give me his name and I'll make his guts into guitar strings. Uh, thanks. Trevor mentions that even though he considers Michael a scumbag, he still cares about him to Jimmy. There's also a very unique dialogue that you can get if you hang out with Jimmy as Trevor and drive near a bar. He will actually say this. Oh! 
there's a bar nearby. Let's get some cold ones. <laughs> cold ones? Are you a frat boy now? But Uncle T, I just thought we could get a beer. I mean, I'm... I don't care how old you are. Little Jim don't drink. Not on my watch. End the discussion. So come on, teen, let's not fuck around. Take me drinking. No, you're a child. I'm almost 20. If we were in Europe, I could legally drink, marry, come out, and be president. Well, sadly, this ain't Europe. So Trevor will not even allow Jimmy to drink. So in the end, a huge part of the reason why he does leave Michael alone is because of his kids. And the thing about this is, I don't think that Michael fully realizes just how much Trevor actually cares about his kids. If you do the Kill Trevor ending, it is non-canon, non but you do see how some of the characters react afterwards. Michael is actually hesitant to help Franklin, but does agree. And if Franklin doesn't pull the trigger, Michael will, but he really won't like doing it. Franklin, what's up big homie? Mike, man. I need to have a conversation with Trevor. You know, yeah, that conversation. Oh, shit. All right, okay. Look, man, the FIB dudes want him gone. And Devin Weston want y'all gone. You know how it is, dawg. Shit. Somebody gotta go. Well, it ain't fucking me. Exactly, man. Look, we meeting at a Borough Heights. So you think you can help me? Uh, I don't know. That sounds like it's your thing, Frank. I I'll see what I can do. Off of what they did to Johnny. So Michael comes uh, to help you uh, if you kill Trevor, but um, but uh, Trevor won't help you kill Michael. Damn, Michael's suit is glitched out. I thought I was with one Judas. I'm surrounded by them! You fake motherfuckers! You want a piece of me? Fucking cook at me! You wanna kill me? Take a fucking shot! As insane as Trevor is, this um uh this scene makes you uh, feel bad for him. Um because Trevor never betrayed Franklin. He never betrayed Franklin or went against Dude. him. Um, but here's the thing, if you don't shoot Trevor, you get an alternate cutscene where Michael will do it. Turn on each other. Trevor values loyalty the most, and that's why, um, uh, what he hates, uh, oh, betrayal so much. Gasoline, Trevor! Man, that was your best fucking friend! Fuck you. Oh. 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 You know what, tough guy? It's... It's time you grow the fuck up. Expanded and enhanced, his suit is glitched. I'm a bad piece of work, but that guy, that piece of shit... No boundaries. No sense of when to back off. No nothing. 24-7 insanity, day in, day out, all the time. Never regretted nothing, never cared for nothing. Well, fuck him. I mean, there's gotta be a limit, kid. You know, a point where even assholes like us say, enough is he fucking enough. Human stew. That's my limit. I know that now. Trevor does have limits, despite what Michael says. He won't betray people, and he would never hurt Michael's kids, ever. So Michael's not entirely being truthful in this. I guess that's that thing. It is what it is. Hey, it's certainly been an education. Surviving is winning, Franklin. Everything else is bullshit. Fairy tales spun by people afraid to look life in the eye. Whatever it takes, kid. Survive. 
Trevor's dialogue is the saddest here, as even though he's a maniac, he's right that he's surrounded by tra traitors. Trevor uses the word Judas to describe Michael and Franklin, which in Christianity is the man who betrayed Jesus by selling him out for money. Basically, this is the worst kind of insult for a traitor, someone who sells out his friends for money. But there is two additional scenes that happen in this ending. The first is, Michael gets a phone call from Jimmy, who is very sad that Trevor is dead. Hello? Uncle T, Dad! I, I just heard he's... he's... He's not gonna bother us anymore. We're safe. Uncle T! He was a good guy! No, he wasn't. He was dangerous. Uncle T? Did you do it? Did you, Dad? Uncle T wanted to kill all of us, Jim. He wasn't well. Uncle T? Man, fuck! Michael tells him that Trevor was not a good man, which is true, but Michael does say something that is completely false, and that is that Trevor was going to kill all of them. That is completely false, and I can prove it. If anything, Trevor's main problem was with Michael, never with Jimmy or Tracy. Trevor would never in a million years hurt them. He wouldn't. You guys remember that one mission where Tracy is a stalker? Michael has the option of letting the stalker go or killing him in the end. If this was Trevor, there would be no option. He would kill the stalker. Michael does not realize how much Trevor cares about his kids, and I think he does finally realize this if Franklin tries to contact him again. Michael sends him an email telling him that that it needed to be done, but then I think he realizes on his own that he messed up for agreeing to kill Trevor. Michael is a series of nightmares throughout the storyline where he will wake up with a gun in his hand. These nightmares will only end after ending C where Michael makes peace with Trevor. If Franklin tries to call Michael again, he will realize his number is blocked, and when he goes to see Michael directly, this scene happens. What are you doing here? Man, you're being real weird, dude. Yeah, well... You did something really weird, okay? Trevor, bro? So excuse me. Man, you did Trevor too. Yeah, but it was your call. You made the call. Don't you forget that. Man, I done so much for you. Well, what about the amount of shit I helped you with? I thought we was in this shit together, man. Fuck. Just, look. I need some time, alright? Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, peace. I think in that scene, Michael finally realized that Trevor wasn't going to kill him, and it was a big mistake to backstab him again. Michael has regrets and he blames Franklin. That's why he doesn't want to see him again. And I know Michael doesn't fully realize how much Trevor cares about his kids, because he never mentions to him in the final mission what Devin Weston did at his home. The reason this is so important is because Trevor isn't fully aware of the Mer Meriwether hit squad that Devin sent to Michael's house. He just knows that Devin wanted Michael dead, but he doesn't know that Meriwether Mercs tried to kill Tracy and Jimmy. If Trevor found, found out about that, Devin would have never arrived alive to the cliffs. He would have been in pieces in the trunk. That's all Michael needed to do was tell Trevor that Devin tried to have his kids killed, and Trevor would have gone berserk and hunted Devin down. Now as for Brad, this is the most important part of this video. And Brad, like I said, is heavily clickbaited on YouTube. Some people have even stated that Brad is Tracy's dad, or they claim that Amanda is the hostage at the start. That's just nonsense. The point is that Brad is heavily clickbaited on YouTube. So what is the truth about Brad? Why does Trevor forgive Michael for killing him? The reason Trevor forgives Michael for killing Brad is because he realized that he never changed at all. What if I told you that Brad was actually the worst one in the group? Most people would think it's Trevor, but no, it was Brad. He was the most dangerous one in the group. Just listen to Trevor and Michael's final discussion here. This is chronologically their final discussion ever together, and it can only be triggered when just Michael and Trevor hang out after ending C. How about this? Just like old times. So, Mike, I should probably say... What? Well, maybe I shouldn't have reacted the way I did. I mean, let's be honest, Brad was a dick and things were getting out of control. You, know, you had the kids and you'd already missed so much of their growing up. I could feel like I was losing you, you know, so I pushed you harder. I thought that, that was how to keep you in the game and I didn't want to lose you. I've said that already, haven't I? Well, it was gonna blow up, man. We all knew it was, and I guess... I guess I'm happy you made it out alive. And with enough money to make sure your kids became total, complete nightmares. Hey. I mean, if you'd taken less, you know, a, a couple million, they'd only be dicks. But with your savings, you were able to truly, completely ruin them. Selfish, soft, without any skill. <laughs> they got it all. You've provided for their future. Ha <laughs> ha. That's funny. Because it's true. It's also kind of sad. Hey, bro, they're sweet. 
Kinda. Brad was a dick, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he was. Bless him. Trevor and Michael both agree Brad was a scumbag. And remember earlier that Trevor told Franklin he would eventually have killed Brad himself, possibly? But Michael and Trevor weren't the only ones who hated Brad. Do you know who else did? Lester did. Remember how he forgot to mention Brad? So what's going on here? What's going on is the big one. A long, long time ago, in a faraway place, there were three guys. Michael, Trevor, and Lester. And Brad. I, uh, yeah. Sure, Brad was there sometimes as well. I mean, there were other guys, though, too. So, uh, anyway, we uh, robbed and lied and we hurt people. Pretty much lived a low-life kind of existence. The reason Lester left him out is because he never liked him. Lester, believe it or not, liked Trevor more than Brad. Just listen to what he tells Trevor in surveilling the score. Is it too much to ask for a little respect? Just a little? Because I respect you, Trevor. Strangely, I do. I can see how you're useful. Terrifying, but useful. Oh, well, I can think of a few uses for you, you chubby little ball of fun. I want your help. All 20% of 200 million of it. Actually, man, I've got another job I want your help with after this. Yeah, right. Whatever. No, seriously. A big job. Payment up front. What is it? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of it before. I want to bring you in on the ground floor this time. That's not a joke about disabled access. I didn't think it was, but now I do. I ain't even talked to Mike about it yet, but he's gonna be on board. He's obligated. What is it? Ain't it obvious? Bustin' Brad out of the clink. Okay, I'm gonna stop you there, T. Some things are just better left alone. Brad's not a thing. He's part of the crew. Well, a crew's more than a sum of its parts, and he was a pretty shit part. He is a pretty shit part, and that's only because he's in jail. No, he was, is shit because he's lazy, forgetful, mean, and stupid with respect. He's changed, all right? He writes now, emails, he's educated himself inside, and he'll be a valuable part of the team. I will, but I gotta talk to you too. You're planning this. Talk to Michael, then come back to me. Oh, fine. Shit. I was gonna pay you, man, when there ain't an obvious profit in something. You're a hard guy to motivate. We got two ideas. It's gonna take a while to get them together or work them up, but I think there's a way. It's not impossible. All right, I'll start thinking about the breakout too. Bradley Snyder. He's getting bored. Talk to Michael, okay? Goodbye. He calls him stupid, lazy, and most importantly, mean. Lester also did avoid talking about it and kept telling Trevor to talk to Michael. The reason that Lester told Trevor to talk to Michael is because Lester knows the truth with how he managed to track down Michael. He definitely knows that Brad is dead and in Michael's grave. But why doesn't he just tell Trevor that? Because even though Brad's death isn't Lester's fault, you don't want to be the guy to tell him that. Lester is scared of Trevor. That's why he doesn't tell him the truth. But now about Brad, what is so bad about him that the entire crew hates him? We only see him for a single mission at the start, but in that single mission, we find out a lot about Brad pretty quickly. Brad is the first character that we see in GTA 5. And what does he do the first second that we see him? He throws a woman hostage to the ground. Then when you go towards the hallway, notice how Brad is right behind Trevor and Michael. Trevor and Michael both secure the vault and the money. Brad doesn't help at all. And on top of that, what the hell was Brad doing when the security guard grabbed Michael? If Brad had secured the hallway while Trevor and Michael were getting the money, he could have prevented the guard from grabbing Michael. Don't tell me he was watching the hostages in the other room. He locked them in that closet. But why wasn't he covering the hallway? Nobody thinks about this. Why wasn't Brad there? It's just Trevor and Michael there. It's because Brad was using them as shields. He also says every man for himself. Let's get out of here. Every man for himself. He wanted them to go first and grab the money. If Trevor wasn't there and the guard would have killed or captured Michael, Brad would have left him 100%. Then when you are fighting outside again, Brad barely helps. It's Trevor and Michael who have to clear the way. But once you get in the car, Brad shows his true face. <sighs> Did you see that shit? I can put that bitch's face against the glass. Did you see that? Yeah, you're a real <laughs> stout. <laughs> He laughs about it, how he slammed the woman hostage to the ground. 
That's how sick in the head he is. He's sadistic. He takes personal pleasure in making other people suffer. Trevor sees heist as a way of life, as he told Michael. Michael sees it as a job to support his family, but Brad, on the other hand, enjoys the violence and making others suffer in the heists. He likes the killing. That's why Trevor says that Brad would have loved the Polito score. The Polito score is arguably the most violent heist in the game because of the minigun. Michael also calls Brad a real stallion and is disgusted by his behavior when he hits the female hostage. A stallion is a slang term for a masculine man, so Michael is sarcastically saying, you're a real man for doing that. Trevor is also bothered by his comments and annoyed. He just responds differently. Trevor says, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of people laugh at this scene of Trevor saying blah, 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 but they don't realize Trevor is getting annoyed by Brad. And this is the only time in the game you see both Michael and Trevor of Brad, and both of them are getting annoyed by him. But there's also something deeply disturbing that you can hear him say. You can only hear him say this if you fail by killing the hostage at the start, but it's still dialogue coming from Brad. This is what he says. Go, shut up! Shut the fuck up! Come on! In the back! If anyone's killing hostages, it's me! Come on! So, you're not Come getting on. none from that ex-stripper? Yeah, he says, if anyone is gonna execute hostages, it's gonna be me. What? That with his comments on the female hostage show how sadistic he is. He enjoys the violence and threatening hostages. He does, a few, he does have a few other dialogues where he calls Michael an a-hole for shooting the hostages and says that they are collateral, but I think this is just because he was jealous he couldn't hurt them himself. I know some people will comment on the fact that Trevor hits the security guard in the head, but, but he doesn't kill him. I, it actually makes much more sense to hurt the security guard because he's possibly a threat. He could have a, a hidden weapon or a panic button. As for Brad, there's no reason whatsoever that he had to hurt that female hostage. He didn't need to, need to throw her to the ground. He could have just locked her in the room with everyone else, but he did it anyways because he's a sadist. Brad also smiles during the heist, which adds further to the fact that he's enjoying every aspect of the violence. And this leads me to believe that Brad could possibly be a psychopath. I know you guys have heard me throw that term around, especially on my Dimitri video, but it's possible. Brad actually could be a psychopath. And as for the, the definition, the Webster definition just defines it this way. A person having an egocentric and antisocial personality marked by a lack of remorse for one's actions and absence of empathy for others and often criminal tendencies. This is basically what a psychopath is. It is someone who has no conscience and no remorse for others. Psychopaths can be extremely manipulative. They would typically, uh, they would typically have no loyalty to anyone and only care about themselves. A psychopath isn't able to feel empathy for others. Not every psychopath is going to be a violent criminal like Brad, but it's the lack of empathy for others that makes them much more prone to crime. And Brad is also very sadistic, which psychopaths can be. Trevor is not a psychopath despite what people think. He is insane and a sociopath, but that doesn't make him a psychopath. You can easily disprove that Trevor is a psychopath because of his love for Patricia. Who is this? It's me. I shouldn't have called. P patricia Mrs. Madrazo! Hey! Are you behaving, Trevor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Patricia, I really miss you. Our time together it was, it was very important. I have to go. Yes, it's a bit creepy, but Trevor does generally care about her. A psychopath wouldn't. Remember, Trevor also cares about Michael's kids and would do anything to save them. He also values loyalty, which a psychopath wouldn't. So for people wondering, is Brad a worse person than Trevor? I would say yes. If you're Trevor's friend, he might push you around, but he's not going to betray you and would go to save you, just like he did for Lamar when he got kidnapped by the Balas. Brad, on the other hand, only cares about himself and not others. And just how Brad is, re remember Michael said that Trevor has no limits. That's false. He does have limits. He won't betray others. He would never kill Michael's kids, uh, nor would he ever hurt Patricia. Brad wouldn't have limits. And what do I think would have happened if it was the other way around? Let's say Trevor died instead at the start of the game. Brad survived and years later found Michael. He would 100% kill Michael. Not because he killed Trevor, but because he tried to screw him over. And Brad wouldn't just stop at Michael. He would kill Michael's entire family. I honestly believe if Brad went after Michael, he would, if he could, capture Michael and kill him last. And he would probably want to make Michael watch him kill his family, kill his kids and his wife. That's how sadistic I believe Brad would be. And then after he makes Michael see uh, that his family dying, he would kill Michael. 
That's how bad of a guy Brad was. Michael was never at this kind of fret from Trevor. Sure, Trevor was angry and left Michael for the triads, but in the end, put his differences aside with Michael. And remember, Trevor would have never hurt his kids. Brad would have never um, put differences aside. But if Brad is this evil psycho scumbag that even Trevor hates, why did he care so much about Brad dying? The first reason why, again, remember, Trevor thought that he changed. The emails were Brad being very different and friendly. He talked about his time in prison and wanted Trevor to come visit him. Remember what he says to Lester about the emails. He honestly thinks that Brad has changed. Was, is shit because he's lazy, forgetful, mean, and stupid with respect. He's changed, all right? He writes now, emails, he's educated himself inside, and he'll be a valuable part of the team. He thought that this was Brad, but this was really Dave Norton pretending to be him. When Trevor realized this wasn't Brad, he realized he never changed and therefore forgot about him and referred to him as a scumbag. Brad never changed, and so Trevor for therefore forgot about him. And the second reason that he got so angry at Michael wasn't because of Brad, but because of the betrayal itself. What does Trevor value the most? He tells Franklin this. It's good to hang out with you, kid. Man, you too. Only less of the kid, please. So you're not looking for a father figure? Man, if I was looking for a father figure, I'd like to think I'd find a couple better candidates than you and Michael. You're a pair of lunatics. I, I mean, I'm bad. But you two? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Well, family is important, though. People is important, sure. But actually, family? Man, all I got is my crazy-ass aunt. Well, loyalty is important. Let me put it that way. Loyalty is important. I mean, that's the only code you need. Loyalty is the code. Kill strangers, protect friends, eat enemies. And star in nature documentaries? Huh? What do you mean? Nothing, man. You go, Tiger. You go. Uh, tigers aren't loyal. They're mostly solitary, like big sharks. I'm more into orcas, or, or lions, or African wild dogs. Yeah, I can see that about you. He values loyalty. And remember how he told Franklin he has principles. A lot of people would laugh at this, thinking what principles that Trevor, Trevor have, but they don't understand the full meaning behind it. Trevor is insane, but remember, he would never betray anyone ever. So if you work with Trevor and you're loyal, he might push you around but he's never going to betray you and have you killed. Trevor sees heist and running with a crew as a way of life, and he believes very strongly you stay true to your crew and watch each other's backs. Michael violated this by going against the crew and thinking for himself. Notice what he says to the crew in the jewelry store heist. It's very different than what he did during that heist. All right, listen up. The four of us in this van, we're about to become accomplices in a major crime. I got to be able to trust you with my life, my liberty, my reputation. Same goes the other way. A crew will only work, only work, when there's trust. So, in the interest of fostering that type of relationship in the short time we've got, let me introduce myself. I'm Michael. I've done this type of thing before, more than a few times. And I've made good money doing it. Enough to spend a long time not doing it. I hope it goes without saying, I know a lot of people. Anyone yaps about me or any of you, you'll be dealt with. Got it? Good. Now, Frank, over to you. This is why Trevor gets so angry if Franklin chooses to betray Michael. Even though he has a problem with Michael, he hates how Franklin, a kid Michael brought in and showed the ropes and was good to, is just going to betray him for money. Yep. Frankie! Hey, T-Man. I'm in trouble, dawg. I think I gotta take out Michael. Got to? Yeah, man, look. The FIB, man, they trying to get me to clap you. And Devin Weston, he trying to get me to ice Michael. And I thought if I, if I do that, man, maybe we got some room, you know? So what? Maybe we got some what room. What are you telling me this for? Cuz, dog, I'm doing this for us. I thought you could. Well, I can't. You're turning on him? I have had enough traitors in my life. Man, your ass could say thank you. Shit. You deserve each other. <laughs> you deserve each other so. Trevor refuses to be part of it. Even though he wanted Franklin to take his side, he was referring to arguments. Trevor never once would ask Franklin to kill Michael in his hangouts. If he was going to kill Michael, he was going to do it himself, not ask somebody else to do it. Michael betrayed Trevor to keep his family safe. Sure, he wanted to keep his savings, but it was mostly for his family. If Franklin betrays Michael, it's just for money, the ultimate selfishness, which would make Franklin much worse than Michael. This is why Trevor refuses to talk to Franklin after he kills Michael.
Oh, look at the email you get from Trevor. So you did it? T. No, man. I heard it was Devin Weston or one of them guys. Trevor replied, I do not believe you. I swear, you know, Michael was a snake, but he was my friend, and I don't kill people, even ones who get me wrapped up in stuff like he did. So Franklin's just a massive liar in this. So Trevor will, um, send you this email. You are dead to me. That's the last email that you get from Trevor. If Trevor meets, um, uh... If Trevor meets Franklin oh, again. It's you, you snake. What? You here to take me out too? No, oh, man. I could have taken you out. I chose to do my. He was good to you. Too good. And he used me, dog, straight up. Could not be trusted, you know that. Now you can't be trusted either. Stay away from me, Frank. I don't know what I'll do. Even though he was technically doing it for his family, this is what Trevor means when he constantly refers to Michael as selfish, and he is right to an extent. You can see just how ungrateful Michael acts towards his crew during the FIB raid, talking about the stuff he's going through, forgetting that his friends like Lester and Franklin are constantly helping them when they have no obligation to do so. Trevor is also not an idiot. He knows he was the main target. In the prologue, if you watch the cutscene very carefully, look at the angle that Brad gets shot at. You guys notice that right there? Yeah, that's right. Dave Norton was aiming for Trevor, not Brad. Trevor also knows this, and he says this when he saves Michael. This is the guy who iced Brad, and would ice me? I'd be better off putting my sights on him. Hames made it out of here, and there's another group of agents looking into our shit. Right now, you're not in a position to let our only friend in the Bureau get killed. I can help you, Trevor. So why was Dave Norton trying to target Trevor exactly? Probably because he was the largest threat. So even though Brad is more evil than Trevor, he's a more worse human being, Trevor was more smarter than Brad, and he was also a larger physical threat to the police than Brad was in the group. That's why Dave Norton targeted him first. If Michael, for example, got into a fight with Brad and ended up killing him without the whole FIB setup, Trevor wouldn't have gone after him, as he would have probably killed Brad himself one day. Trevor won't betray you, but that doesn't mean he won't kill you if you piss him off enough. And Brad wasn't being a key member of the team. He was constantly in it for himself, and putting the crew at more risk. The reason he's putting the crew at more risk is because they are just there for the money, but Brad likes to engage in violence and hurt hostages. That puts them at risk of being discovered during a heist, and a heist can go really bad if you have somebody like Brad. That's why Brad was an a-hole, and he deserved it in the end. Trevor wanted to see whether Michael was still selfish at the end of the game, and he was testing Michael. Rem remember, Trevor is the one who put his gun away first. Michael could have easily dropped him after that, but doesn't. But most importantly, during the fight, Trevor stops talking on the radio. He's doing this on purpose to test Michael. This, I bet a lot of people missed this. Frank, I think he's in trouble. This is FIB team where I last saw him, and he ain't responded. Man, I gotta stay out here with Lamar. Can you get to him? Shit. Fine! I'll try and find him! Talk to me! me, T! There's war zone on our side, homies! Not a few rounds. It's good to know you care. Next time I'll leave you to it. Watch out! Another FIB team on the way! The 
reason Trevor stopped talking was because he was testing Michael to see if he would still care, if he would notice if he was in danger. If Michael never checked up on Trevor and only cared about himself during that fight, Trevor would have known that. He wasn't winded. He was testing Michael to see if he would go and help him out. That's why he wasn't responding. He wanted to see a genuine reaction from Michael of whether he would be concerned if he was in danger. And Michael passed the test. Trevor was still pissed about the whole corrupt FIB setup at the start, but at least now he knew that Michael wasn't selfish. And it was at this point that his conflict with him ended. It's also fully resolved in one of the final two conversations Michael has with Trevor, in which Michael actually apologizes to Trevor and offers him his cut. He admits that he screwed him over and was sorry, and Trevor accepted his apology. This is very important. Well, T? Mm, well, what, sugar tits? <laughs> well, we got there. In the end, I mean. I mean, we moved on. Have we? I hope so. Haven't we? Hmm. I guess. I mean, I fucked you over, and that's why I want to apologize. And I also want to give you my share of the money we boosted in this last score. Hmm. You do? Sure. I don't really need it. I want you to be happy. Wow. I don't... I don't need it either. And I don't want it. It was never about the money, Michael. I know it wasn't. It was... I was in a tough situation, and I fucked up, and I apologize. Hmm. Okay. I accept your apology. Thank you. So, Mike, I should probably say... What? Well, maybe I shouldn't have reacted the way I did. I mean, let's be honest, Brad was a dick and things were getting out of control. You, know, you had the kids and you'd already missed so much of their growing up. I could feel like I was losing you, you know, so I pushed you harder. I thought that, that was how to keep you in the game and I didn't want to lose you. I've said that already. Haven't I? Well, it was gonna blow up, man. We all knew it was, and I guess... I guess I'm happy you made it out alive, and with enough money to make sure your kids became total, complete nightmares. Hey! I mean, if you'd taken less, you know, a, a couple million, they'd only be dicks! But with your savings, you were able to truly, completely ruin them. Selfish, soft, without any skill. <laughs> they got it all. You've provided for their future. Ha <laughs> ha! That's funny. Because it's true. It's also kind of sad. Hey, bro, they're sweet. Kinda. Brad was a dick, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he was. Bless him. So at this point, Trevor would never consider going after Michael because he stopped being selfish. But now here at the end, we have one final question. Who was right, Michael or Trevor? My opinion? I think they were both wrong. I think that Trevor was wrong in expecting Michael to stay with the heist gang, putting himself in danger when he had a family to raise. He admits he felt like he was losing him in that friend conversation, and he kept pushing him. Trevor should have known Michael had to take care of his family first. However, Michael is also wrong in how he betrayed Trevor and the gang. While Brad was a, a sadistic psychopath, Trevor and Lester did, did nothing to him. Lester backed out of the heist and would have been a target if he helped plan it. That's why he didn't. He knew it was a setup. Trevor was insane, but again, he never hurt Michael or his kids. And his kids were never scared of Trevor because he was never threatening to them. Michael didn't have to do what he did. He did have to get out. That's no, there's no question about that. But how exactly? And this is why if you defend Michael, you still have to admit he betrayed Trevor. It doesn't matter whether it was the right thing to do, he still betrayed him, his friend that he had known for over a decade. How else could Michael have done this? Well, Lester. Lester was insanely good with computers, even back then. The FIB pretty sure had a good idea of who Trevor was, but there isn't really proof that they knew who Lester was because he could cover his tracks. Michael should have gone to Lester and offered him a bunch of money to help him create a new identity. With all the resources Lester had, he definitely would have had the resources for that. There isn't any proof that the FIB knew how Michael looked, they just knew his name. That's why the security guard doesn't even recognize his face, he just says after that, I'll remember your face. Michael doesn't alter his face at all with plastic surgery years later. Even with a fake name, somebody would eventually spot him. So that's why I don't think they knew what he looked like. It wasn't until he revealed himself. Lester should have made a new identity for him. And Michael should have moved his family someplace safe. Michael should have offered Lester some money, saying, here's, here's a few million dollars. Please make a new identity for me and my family so we can leave. That way he doesn't screw over the crew and he still gets his family out safely. Trevor would have to deal with that. However, because of what Michael did, it's hard for me to feel bad for him. 
If you guys watched my playthrough, you would have seen I sympathized with Michael to an extent, but I was a little more on Trevor's side. And because Michael brought in these corrupt FIB agents, he opened Pandora's box. He trapped himself where he couldn't escape and had to do their bidding or all their info on Michael would get leaked and he would get arrested. This is why I don't feel bad for him when he has to do the jobs for Dave Norton and Steve Haynes. I don't like Steve Haynes and Dave Norton, but he brought them in, he knew the risks, and now he was trapped doing their bidding. That's why I don't feel bad for Michael in, in that regard. He chose to take the devil's deal, and it was his own fault he had to do all those crazy jobs for them. So they were both wrong, in my opinion. Michael for the way he went out, betraying his crew, and Trevor for pushing Michael too hard and not understanding that Michael wanted to take care of his family first. In the end, this worked ironically. The worst person, um, Brad, died. He deserved it. Trevor and Lester escaped. Michael got the kids out. Trevor and him made up years later, and, and they, got rid of, they got rid of all the people threatening them in the end. So here's a breakdown of why Trevor doesn't kill Michael. So many people get it wrong and think that Trevor just, just agreed Michael did the right thing with the betrayal. No, the reason Trevor didn't kill Michael is the following list, from top to bottom in order of importance in my opinion. Number one, Michael stopped being selfish. He didn't pull the trigger on he didn't pull the trigger on Trevor, and on top of that, he also apologized to Trevor. Trevor would have never hurt uh, Tracy or Jimmy. So Trevor was very close to Michael's kids. He watched them grow up, and he would do anything to protect them. That's why he lashes out at Laszlo. He saw what Laszlo did to, to Tracy, and he threatens him over. And he also tells Jimmy, if anybody threatens, if anybody threatens, threatens you or your sister, that I'm going to make them pay. So Trevor would never hurt Michael's kids. Even if he has a direct problem with Michael, he knows that if he kills Michael, it's going to hurt his kids. And he doesn't want to do that, even if he doesn't physically harm them. And number three, Brad never changed. So Trevor was really excited to help get Brad out of prison, but then realized Brad was dead. And so Trevor was manipulated by Dave Norton, who sent those emails. And in those emails, it seemed like Brad was a changed man. He was much more nice and polite. He wasn't as nasty as he was previously. And so Trevor thought Brad changed, but Brad didn't change because he was in the ground. And so Trevor realized he was a scumbag then, and he died a scumbag. And number four, the people going after them were worse than Michael. You had the triads, you had Devin Weston, you had um, the corrupt FIB agents, you had Merriweather, you had just a whole list of people that just wanted them dead. And at that moment, they were just much more important to deal with than Michael. It was a combination of factors that convinced Trevor to back off. While the story of GTA 5, for example, wasn't as good as GTA 4, in my opinion, I think the best part about the story in GTA 5 was Michael's betrayal. The whole story was written pretty well in it, that you can make an argument that Trevor was right, or you can make an argument that Michael was right. That's what's great about the story. But in the end, I believe personally that both of them were wrong. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, do drop a like on it. It does help me to make more content like this. I want to explain Brad's backstory and those hidden conversations between Trevor and Michael that you guys might have missed. Trevor might be insane, but he has limits and isn't evil. And I don't think a lot of people know just how bad Brad was. I hope you guys might have learned something new about the characters like Brad. Thank you everyone for watching. And if you guys want to know what North Yankton or North Dakota looks like in real life, that's that place Ludendorff in GTA. It's based on Bismarck, North Dakota. I have a video of that at the end where I visit it in real life. Check out my lore playlist. I have a bunch of other lore videos, including the truth about Floyd and Deborah, and I have a GTA 5 playthrough. I'll link those at the end. Thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Ah! Woo! Oh. Hmm. So now what? Now we keep a low profile and get on with our lives. As friends. Well, do I have a choice? No, not really. All right, then. As uh, flawed, awful, totally uncomfortable, and poorly matched friends. Absolutely. Oh, that's perfect. Then we can get back to the kind of capitalism we practice. Shit, I don't know how much more better that is than Devin's con. Ooh, hypocrisy, Franklin. Civilization's greatest virtue. Jesus, your therapist has a lot to answer for. I know, I still hate myself. But hey, at least I know the words for it now. Yeah, but I hate you, and I know the words for it, so does that mean I don't have to go to therapy? Look, man, you two motherfuckers terrify me of that middle age. I'm good. You're right to be afraid, Franklin. Yeah. Be very afraid, Franklin. <laughs> Tell you one thing, T. I'm getting too old for this nonsense. Oh.